So there's a group of guys uh, who used to work at Think Progress. Now, Think Progress is a blog that Center for American Progress runs. Now, I think Progress, Think Progress has done some great work in the past. I've quoted them. And uh, especially, I would argue, during the golden era when it was run by Fast Shakir, uh, they represented progressive positions really well. They would research, they would find out facts, they would share those facts. That's why we would share what they wrote, not because we were interested in their opinion. Uh, we have plenty of our own opinion. Uh, we were interested in the facts that they were bringing to light. Um, but they are within the Center for American Progress, and that is clearly a tool for the Democratic Party. Now, when you say that, they said, no, 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 we're just progressive. Now, funny enough, it happens to house a lot of the people who wound up working for the Hillary Clinton campaign, including the top of the campaign, John Podesta. He used to run for the Center for American Progress. Then he handed it off to Neera Tandon, who also uh, is obviously working with the Clinton team. Right? Huge ally of the Clinton team, no one would argue with that, Neera Tandon wouldn't argue with that. So uh, we now find out emails about what they thought about uh, Fast Shakir, who ran it in the past for them, and a couple of the writers that came out of that uh, group. Now, so first we've got an email uh, from Daniel uh, Legger, and it's to Neera Tandon, pointing out that one of the guys they don't like is Lee Fong. And Lee Fong now uh, writes The Intercept, and he had written an article called Clinton's senior advisor authored paper arguing for paid leave proposal she now opposes. So you see it there from Daniel Legger to Neer Tannen and others. You see the subject that I just quoted. And now in the text it says, this is Zaid. Oh, I'm sorry, Lee Fong comes in late. This is Zaid Jelani. So take with 100 grains of salt, but just flagging nonetheless. I like the 100 grains of salt because the Intercept, they do real journalism. They're not bought off like the rest of the media in Washington. Take it with a grain of salt. Is there anything wrong in their facts? When I looked through the emails, I didn't see any thing they pointed out that that was wrong with the facts in the article. No, there's nothing wrong with the facts. But we've successfully told the rest of the Washington media that they shouldn't pay attention to Zaid Jelani or Lee Fong or Fast Shakir or any of these guys. So <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Journalist. <laughs> Journalists. Okay. Then near attendant writes to John Podesta on the same topic, and, and you see the same subject header there. She says, Faz's bloggers are, quote, a fucking gift that keep on giving. See, she's of the belief that Zaid uh, Jelani and Lee Fong are Faz Shakir's bloggers because he had once worked with them because they brought you the facts that I told you about earlier that shows that progressives are right. So in the midst of a Democratic Party machine that's trying to put that message out, good job, guys, good job. Now, when they point out the faults of the Democratic Party machine, hey, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you guys doing here? These guys are a fucking gift that keeps on giving. They, in other words, they're a pain in our ass. Again, no facts to disprove anything they have ever written. Just, we don't like them. Now, at this point, you got to be wondering, who the hell is Fast Shakir, right? Because you don't hear about him a lot in the... Press and uh, and and so I just want to give you a sense of uh, who he is and what his bio is. He was the vice president at the Center for American Progress, uh, and he was a Think Progress editor, as I was explaining to you. He worked at Nancy Pelosi's as her director of new media, online makes sense, uh, given his expertise. And the U.S. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, senior advisor. Actually, he's one of the reasons that why there's good evidence that Harry Reid is actually more liberal than we suspect. And if you hire uh, Faz Shakir, you get a sense of like, well, this guy's a real progressive because we know what, what Faz is about. And so uh, I view that all to be highly complimentary. I guess uh, the John Podesta and Neer Tandon don't necessarily share my opinion. Now, Judd Legum, who now runs Think Progress, writes in a separate email, subject, Faz advising Bernie. Uh-oh, now we're going to have real trouble. And then it goes to near attendant among others. And they explain JDP, that's John Podesta, knows. And it says, I think it's just kind of informal for now, but he's like writing speeches and stuff, or at least speech language. Now, if you're just looking at Judd's email, I, you know, it's fairly inoffensive just pointing out, okay. Uh, the assumption built in, of course, is we're on all on Team Hillary. Think progress, neutrality. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're all on Team Hillary. Oh, wait a minute. Breach, 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 core breach. What well, guys out there advising for Bernie Sanders? What, what, what? We're neutral. We're neutral. You're not neutral. <laughs> Does any of this look neutral to you? Okay. Neera Tandon writes back, you know about this? Jesus. Makes sense is all these 
freaks after Hillary are like his spawn, these freaks, pointing out that she, for example, gets paid $225,000 a speech uh, at, in, by her Wall Street supporters. But that's a fact. The freaks, <laughs> Faz, spawned all these guys who are telling the truth. Oh, we're going to do something about them. Okay. Now, John Potessa writes back, yes, uh, gave him a very hard time. I have to say this does not go down easy with me. Wish him well in life. See what happened there? Now, Podesta's more polite, but the message is, if you ask me, even sterner. Without cursing, basically, oh, if you go fast, there you go. Okay, we wish you well in life. But you didn't get the memo. The memo is, we support Hillary Clinton, and that's it. We don't advise Bernie Sanders. We are the establishment. I, I would know I got a similar talking to at MSNBC. This is apparently a speech that is given. Or perhaps it is assumed in the building, and if you didn't get the assumptions and you didn't get the memo, then they write emails like this behind you, behind your back. And you don't know it until WikiLeaks comes along. But what you did was, by supporting a real progressive, you might have killed off some portion of your career, whether you're the guys in the press, Zaid and Lee, or you're uh, Fast Shakir. Who, no one doubts that he did a great job of getting Think Progress excellent content, good numbers, if you care about the numbers. No one doubts that he did a good job of bringing out a message for Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, etc. No one doubts any of his qualifications. But, oop, you made a mistake. We're all Team Hillary here. We're Team Establishment. You go run your mouth off trying to be a real progressive. And we wish you well in your life because we're done with you. Okay, one final one. Near 10 and back to John Podesta. This one's a little easier. He's a fucker. Look, last thing on this. This is the same Nero Tandon who wrote very similar things about Larry Lessig. So he's the Harvard Law professor who wants to get money out of politics, briefly ran in the primaries against Hillary Clinton, the same kind of language, etc. It's funny, these guys in all these leaks, I haven't ever seen them call any Republicans fuckers or fucking assholes like she does with progressives over and over again. Funny, I, Rahm Emanuel has this tough guy image, right, in Washington? I never saw him yell at any Republicans. I never used, saw him use those famous curse words against Republicans. The one famous time that he was caught on saying the F word was Rahm Emanuel, former chief of staff for Barack Obama, part of the same circles of establishment corporatist Democrats, is when he called liberals, quote, fucking retarded. You see, you know why? It's because when you're an actual progressive, it gets under their skin because it exposes them for who they are. It turns out it wasn't predetermined, it wasn't destiny, it wasn't the only choice. When these guys, as part of the Rebel Alliance, say, no, we can be real progressives. We can actually try to deliver the truth and keep both parties accountable and people within our party accountable as we run a primary to determine who should represent us. No, 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 we're not going to have that, okay? So those are the guys that embarrass the near attendants and the John Podestas of the world. And it's, look, I'm, you, they will hate me for this, and uh, I look forward to their later emails <laughs> on us, right? But it's not about them. It, it's, and when I've interacted with John Podesta, I, it's been nothing but a pleasant interaction. And I don't know, and honestly, and all kidding aside, I don't care what he writes in his emails about me. What I care about is the mindset. The mindset is we are the establishment. We take donations, we work with lobbyists, we get into office, we take that power, and we use it to basically help those lobbyists and those donors while being slightly progressive, slightly, okay? Now, if you try to be actual progressives and you work on principle, you're annoying us because you're showing people that it actually is possible, that we made a choice. We made a choice to work within this corporate donor system, and we're never going to change it. I can't wait for John Podesta and Neera Tandon, who again are pleasant people, at least in, they have been in my interactions with them, to prove me wrong, to change the way Washington works, just like Barack Obama promised back in 2008, and to get all the money out of politics, and to have our representatives actually represent us, and to push forward a really strong progressive agenda. I promise you from the bottom of my heart, with everything I've got, that I will come out here and profusely apologize to them and say, they were right, man. They said we're going to do this thing gradually.
and they said they were going to get money out of politics, and they did. They, Hillary Clinton proposed that constitutional amendment within the 30, first 30 days, and I thought she was just going to leave it be. But no, she pushed and she pushed until she got the amendment passed, and they solved it and they got the progressive agenda through. My bad, my bad. It turns out we were the fuckers. It turns out they were right. I can't wait to do that segment. My guess is that segment ain't coming because they're not going to do it. All they're going to do is get annoyed at the guys who are fighting for real change. But now you have a little bit better sense of who's on your side and who's not.